Roar presents Sister Brother Animal, his vegan 2018 in two installments by Plant Based News. Full presentation on YouTube. In our previous film, we showcased the increasing health, environmental, and ethical awareness around the globe as more and more people began to speak out. Why do we rarely hear climate change campaigns targeting the animal agriculture industry? Let's follow the money. And who funded like that per study? Day. But who that was funded, who funded that study? Funded by industry. That was an egg that industry was, funded no, study. The disproportion between that little bit of extra pleasure you might get from eating meat and the phenomenal amount of destruction required to produce it should surely commend it to anyone as a stupid thing to do. What do you think is the biggest misconception about a vegan diet? The biggest misconception is everyone says, where do you get your protein? And I've had a long-term health condition and I've seen a dramatic shift in my health in the last 12 days. It's recognized again by the American insurance industry that there's only two dietary plans that can reverse heart disease. There's no meat in those programs. Mm -hmm. They're plant-based programs. It's blatantly obvious now that we do not need to consume animals to be healthy. We'll be far healthier without them. As veganism continued to grow in popularity and garner mainstream appeal, the meat industry found themselves under increasing pressure. You say yourself you have a vested interest, Cormac, in this. Are you worried about veganism growing in popularity? Because the meat and dairy industry, let's be honest and not pull any punches, it's a sunset industry. It has no place in civilized society, period. This film shares 2018's story behind the changing conversation. For me, I want to bring a message, which is veganism and that there doesn't have to be torture in fabulous fashion. 2018, this next year, is our year. Like, it's the year we go mainstream. So what we're definitely seeing for 2018, the theme overall is plant-based eating. Have faith that there are doctors, that there are lawyers, that there are people out there who are also embracing this. As people use digital technology more than ever, the lies created by powerful industries were revealed and the shape-shifting began. What's for dinner? What's for dinner? Steroid-injected minced cow bollock, courtesy of the farming industry, tearing up rainforests to plant animal feed. I have slowly and reluctantly come to the conclusion that as it stands now, honest doctors can no longer practice honest medicine. We have a complete healthcare system failure. We are contemplating an agricultural crisis, an ecological crisis, as well as the climate breakdown crisis, and it's being driven by the food that we eat and the way that it's produced. There's a 500% increase in vegans in the United right. States since 2014. That's like a growing, growing number. Demand for meat-free food increased by nearly 8,000% last year. And the number of people who are going vegan has quadrupled in the last five years. Now, more and more people are cutting out meat and dairy products and adopting a plant-based diet. And yes. if we can live well without causing harm to other animals, why wouldn't we? So I, I, would, I agree. You know what? I agree with you. I'm just going to say it. I agree with you completely there. You know, the evidence is clear. Uh, the, the future is definitely plant-based. It's not just a trend. It's not just a phase. People have been hit with multiple sources of information and it has, still hasn't hit everybody but more and more people are seeing some pretty dramatic and compelling research. There's more and more vegans all the time, there's more and more people taking that emphasis to change their life and be active and to spread the message. In 2018, I have seen an explosive growth in the vegan movement. We're going to be looking at a very, very different world in about five years where uh, a huge percentage of people will be vegan. I think we're very close to that tipping point. What was once a fringe movement is now mainstream. There's no stereotype anymore. I mean, we really are heading into a plant-based revolution. The world is changing.
the new year ushered in Veganuary, an initiative that has seen explosive growth over the last few years and encourages the public to try a plant-based diet. In case you hadn't noticed, this month is being called Veganuary. It's Vegan January. It's people cutting back on meat and dairy foods for their New Year's resolution. And many retailers and restaurants have picked up on the trend. In January 2018, it broke new records, grabbed headlines and set off a series of TV debates. If people want to do this, get on with it quietly, do whatever you want to do. And arguments against veganism flooded the mainstream. Go back to the time of the caveman, for God's sake, it's nature. Do you understand <laughs> what happens in jungles? Uh, we've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. Put me right off him, I found it. <laughs> he was a wimp. Because oh. <laughs> he couldn't order a good steak, like a red-blooded man who can order a good steak. So if you think about PETA and environmentalist groups, veganism, they're all able to exist now in 2018 because of the meat eaters of the past who built this amazing civilization that allows unfocused adults to chase their fringe causes. Well, what do you mean it's not obvious? A thing? People eat meat just stupid, not eat meat. That's just stupid. It's not a real thing. Why is it stupid? Because everybody likes meat. How would you know unless you ate it? Hey, who can't eat a good piece of bacon? And you say that people who are on vegan diets are malnourished, and people who are malnourished are more likely to commit crimes. Presumably you're not going out and collecting your own nuts and seeds and plants, are you? No, and so and I think... Who's killing those plants? I, I think, you. Seriously? I, okay. Who's killing all those plants? Well, who's collecting them? Because you make the point Someone's about ripping them out of the ground. The anti-vegan backlash continued when iconic cooking show Great British Bake Off announced it was going vegan for a week with some unable to hide their fury on social media, boycotting the show on principle. Vegans were branded demons at meat industry conferences, senior editors made jokes about killing vegans, and the rhetoric on mainstream media became weaker and even irrelevant. Now, if you look at avocados, for example, which many vegans consume, and we're now consuming six times um, the, the, the number of avocados here in the West uh, than five years ago even, you know, the, the Mexican rainforest is being completely destroyed. But is it possible that the vegans and the vegetarians have gotten hold of the agriculture department and infiltrated it, so to speak, and are pushing a meatless menu on the rest of the world? Americans eat two times as much meat as anybody else in the world. Well, that's because we win all the world wars, Mom. We gotta go. We're undefeated. You don't think a cow's a steak, do you? <laughs> I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Arguments against veganism were tested on mainstream platforms, and the debate was raging. If you saw an animal die, right, mm. if you saw the animal die, if I, slaughtered a, if I slaughtered the beef in front of you, could you then eat a steak? Because that's the hypocrisy I can't would, would anybody here go plant-based? No, but those are practical questions. I want to get to the root question, the moral question. Do we, do we have dominion over the animals, or are they our peers? Angie says there is real evidence of a plant-based diet being not only healthier for the individual, but the planet. Now veganism was gaining mainstream appeal, its detractors were finding it hard to provide credible arguments and their weaknesses were being exposed. I mean, do you show the people that come to your farm things like the, the artificial insemination? Do you show them what happens to the calves? Do you show them the pens they're kept in for up to eight weeks at a time where they're not allowed to see their mums? They're allowed to nurture, they're allowed to socialise? Do you take them to the slaughterhouse as well and show the knife being pulled across their throat? Or do you keep that bit hidden and just show kind of the cows grazing and being fed? I like to think that we show uh, everyone the full spectrum well, do, do you? Or you either do or you don't. Well, I like to think that we do, yeah. So do you show the people that come to your farm what happens to the dairy cows that are taken from their mother? Yes. And do you show the fact that they suck on people's fingers because they want to suckle from their mother to obtain the milk that we take that is rightly for them? When you take a calf away from its mum, what is that process like? <sighs> Cut. <laughs> In response to Veganuary and the TV appearances it brought came an increasing backlash from the dairy industry, which launched Febudairy. Led by livestock specialist Dr Judith Kappa, farmers were instructed to spread a positive message of the dairy industry throughout February. I thought it was rather a shame not to celebrate all of the fabulous dairy products that we all have access to every single day. So for example, we have butter and bread here. And lastly, of course, nice cold, ice cold milk, as the old slogan used to go. Febudairy did little to convince the public to rally behind the dairy industry. Instead, 
it had an unexpected effect. Many used Febuderi to create awareness about the dairy industry and initiatives were launched, including the Switch for Good campaign at the end of February, which aired an anti-dairy advert during the Winter Olympic Games' closing ceremony. I did it and I got stronger. I did it to take back my life. I did it to run faster and I ran faster the next day. I did it for my athletic performance and it worked. I made the switch at almost 40 for my health. I didn't need dairy milk to make Olympic history twice. Going back to cow's milk? No way. I made the switch for good. For good. For good. I am proud to be dairy free. As the message around dairy spread, things were also starting to change behind the scenes. Powerful investors were joining forces with food tech leaders. And this, by the end of 2018, would put significant pressure on the animal agriculture industry. We could produce all the protein required by the world's population in 2050 with 2% of Earth's land if we did it the way we're producing our meat, as opposed to more than 45% of Earth's land that's currently being used raising animals for food. As we get closer and closer to building a piece of meat that has no differences from its animal protein equivalent, we welcome in literally you know, hundreds of thousands of new consumers with every incremental change and step we make forward to making this product as good as it can be. The meat analog industry, which laid down its roots in Europe in the 1970s with products like textured vegetable protein, was traditionally seen as tasteless and unfashionable. But in 2018, it had morphed into a more lucrative and exciting market. We are celebrating the release of Masters of the Sun VR and Apple the App, the Filipino chef, is cooking <laughs> Beyond Burgers. One company, Beyond Meat, insisted that their plant-based burger be positioned in the meat aisle. It was a gamble, but knowing the product's taste and texture had begun to mimic traditional meat, bosses didn't want it hidden away in the free-from section. Within months of merchandising the burger, it was outselling beef in some stores. In Southern California, in one of the largest conventional retailers in the country, we are now the number one selling patty in the meat case. So ahead of Angus, ahead of 8020 beef, ahead of turkey, ahead of chicken patties. And our belief is that we will transform the meat section into the protein section. So it's no longer just hamburger, chicken, you know, chicken breast. It's cow protein, chicken protein, and plant protein. And the results have been phenomenal. We have launched this now in the two largest retailers in the United States. In several regions, the Beyond Burger is the top selling packaged burger in the meat section. To have that level of interest in the products in the meat case itself, this soon was really exciting. Other supermarkets began to position plant-based products in the meat aisle. The meat analog industry quickly attracted high profile investors, such as one of Asia's richest men, Li ka -shing, Bill Gates, and Leonardo DiCaprio, among others, as influencers around the world became increasingly aware of the impact of animal agriculture. The scale of the impact, the environmental impact of animal agriculture is really hard to appreciate. It blows almost everything else out of the water. It's responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than all planes, cars, trains, and other transportation combined. That is really shocking when you read that. Above the fossil fuel industry. It takes at least 10 times as much energy and resources to make a pound of animal protein as it does for plant-based protein. We cannot continue to sustain our population on the level of meat consumption that we are mm -hmm. without having something change. And what we've heard now is that we need to keep it below one and a half degrees um, uh, temperature rise. And in order to do that, we must absolutely cut down on meat and dairy consumption. And so it's the quickest way that we have for grabbing the thermostat of the planet and turning it down. Even if we don't care about ourselves, we have our children. 80% of all US antibiotics are fed to farmed animals leading to dangerous, incurable human diseases. The world has plenty of scope to feed 9 billion, 10 billion, 12 billion people, but not if we're all eating steak and chicken and pork. We, we have to go to that plant-based diet. If, if, you know, if there's to be any fair settlement, fair dispensation for the rest of this century so that we don't have a situation where the rich can just pursue whatever desires they want while the poor die as a result. The most striking statistic for me is that 100% of famine is a result of animal agriculture. And I sometimes have people challenge that fact and I'm like, it takes 
280 pounds of grain to make one pound of beef. If you fed that grain directly to people, famine ends. Building meat from plants quickly became a huge scientific research effort. New facilities were set up and the stage was set for huge change. We live in an age of disruption. We have Uber and Lyft disrupting the taxi cab and limo industry. We have Airbnb disrupting the hotel industry. And we need to disrupt the entrenched fast food industry, those dinosaurs. We are almost 50% preferred by meat consumers over the meat they get today. And so in two or three years, we've essentially caught up to the cow. But we're only getting better, and we already know a bunch of ways that we can make our product better from the fat system, the way the flavor is generated, the texture and the chew. And as we continue to research and build that with our team, we'll start delivering this. And you know, next year and the year after, it'll be better and better to the point where the cow really is completely obsolete as a technology for food. Oh, you're going to love this. Mm. You can have a great tasting, juicy burger without the meat. Like, my husband has an Impossible Burger, and he is like, this tastes like a regular burger to me. I don't know everything else on this thing, but the, the burger itself. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I like it. This thing tastes like meat, it smells like meat. If you put it in the pan or put it in the grill, it acts like meat. And I'm telling you in the next, let's say five to seven years, the impact on the meat industry is going to be strong. None of what you see here comes from an animal, not even the egg. What we tend to do, no matter what, is focus on the things that matter. Are we reaching more people? Are we doing it in a way that's actually helping the planet instead of harming the planet? And if the answer is yes to those things, we feel good. And if the answer is not, we feel like assholes. Um, and our biggest question is, is this thing, is this person we're hiring, is this thing we're doing increasing the probability that we do more good? And if the answer is yes, we're going after it. To test this out, we got 10 regular cheeseburgers and then 10 impossible vegetarian burgers to do a little compare and contrast. As businesses capitalized on the selling power of plant-based alternatives, many physicians within healthcare dug deeper. Tastes great and you get to live longer. That's what plant-based right. eating is all about. Using the remarkable power of whole food plant-based nutrition to prevent and treat disease. Say goodbye to the days of just hot dogs and hamburgers on the hospital menu. Good Samaritan is starting to incorporate healthier plant-based items in their patient diets. Every diet requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of learning some new tricks in the kitchen, maybe learning some new tastes. But a plant-based diet emerges as not only better for blood sugar control, better for your weight, better for your cholesterol, better for your blood pressure, but better in so many ways that we really think that's the thing to recommend. In 2018, a number of studies were published supporting the increasingly accepted idea that a whole foods plant-based diet is optimal for health. One example being a review paper published in Cardiovascular Medicine stating that the only diet shown to reverse heart disease is a plant-based diet, a sentiment echoed by physicians for a number of years. Heart disease is the number one killer in the United States, and heart disease is reversible and preventable with nutrition. We know we have the cure to heart disease. We have the ability to eradicate heart disease. A plant-based diet has also been shown to reverse type 2 diabetes hypertension and prostate cancer, as well as prevent 14 of the 15 leading causes of death. Eating a plant-based diet has extraordinary health benefits. Reduced risk for hypertension, reduced risk for high cholesterol, reduced risk for cardiovascular disease. I've seen patients who have full-blown diabetes go off of their insulin completely. Um, I've seen patients with hypertension that have been on multiple antihypertensives for years come off of all of their medications. The British Dietetic Association and the American Academy of Dietitians have both said that a well-planned vegan diet can be a completely healthful and optimal diet for anyone at all stages of life. A discussion opened up not just about how healthy plant-based diets are, but also about what is wrong with our current system. Right now we have a system that is based almost completely on sick care instead of health care. We call it health care, mm -hmm. but it really is sick care. It's money and dollars behind sickness. We spend more money in this country than any other country in the world on health care, and we don't have better outcomes. So somebody has to stop and say, hmm, what is going on here? When you eat the, the standard American diet, you get the standard American diseases. And I don't wish chronic disease on anybody. 
But if people are eating a debilitating diet, they're going to have debilitating diseases. The heart disease, the diabetes, the autoimmune diseases, certain forms of cancer. Milk does a body good is not science. It's marketing. It's nonsense. We were made to believe that meat-based diets are superior to plant-based diets, a lie that has been exposed by medical experts again and again. When people eat a lot of animal products, particularly meat-based protein, your arteries are more likely to get clogged, your arteries are more likely to constrict, the arteries are more likely to get clogged up with plaque and other things. You get chronic inflammation, which is an underlying cause of so many chronic diseases. Uh, your risk of premature death from pretty much everything goes up correspondingly. And yet, when you go on a plant-based diet, you're really getting a double benefit, because not only are you not eating the things that are disease-promoting, but you're getting literally hundreds of thousands of other substances that are that are protective. What you put in your body is either going to create disease or fight it. There is no middle ground. I've seen them reverse their high blood pressure, reverse their diabetes, reverse their obesity, simply by telling them to go home and instead of using a scalpel, use a knife and use a fork. Also in 2018, a number of athletes ditched animal products and films were announced that would slay the myth that you can't be strong as a vegan. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? Vegan athletes started appearing in major magazines, with bodybuilder Nimai Delgado gracing the cover of Muscle and Fitness and Jeremy Reinders, the fittest man in the Netherlands, featuring on the front of Men's Health. A lot of people always ask me, like, so where do you get your protein? And a lot of people don't have a clue that there's protein in plants. Stop worrying about the protein, because you'll get enough. You know, the strongest land animals, horses, elephants, rhinos, I don't know, gorillas, they get their protein from plants. During the Winter Olympics, Canadian figure skater and decade-long vegan Megan Dormel made headlines around the world when she claimed two medals. Record-holding marathon runner and vegan Fiona Oakes completed the Atacama Ultra Marathon, and as 2018 progressed, numerous athletes spoke out about how a plant-centered approach to eating had made them stronger, including NHL player Zeno Chara, boxer Mike Rashid, soccer players Hector Bellerin, Jermaine Defoe, and Chris Smalling, as well as Lewis Hamilton. I do feel the best I've ever felt in my life, in my 32 years, physically. No, do any no. of you guys still eat no, meat? No. Nothing. Zero. No. Order. How hard was that? Not as hard as it, it is living the, at 425. Right, yeah, absolutely. Right. I've watched hundreds, if not maybe thousands of people at this point have dramatic transformations. Plant-based athletes from a wide range of sports claimed podium positions in various competitions, from world-class surfer Tia Blanco to powerlifter Julia Trezise Conroy and ultra runner Vlad Ixel, as well as many others who also achieved stunning successes. Influencers adopted a plant-based diet, businesses were starting to see how they could cash in on the movement. Plant-based diet. Logo? Now my logo. Nike promoted the plant-based lifestyle. Stella McCartney made trainer history when she launched a vegan version of Adidas's iconic Stan Smith shoe. And other fashion brands became increasingly aware of consumer demands for animal-free clothing and accessories while luxury fashion houses like Gucci and Michael Kors started ditching fur in 2017. Even more names followed suit in 2018, including Bellstaff, Burberry, John Galliano, and Versace. Versace, for so long, you know, they were leaders in the fur industry. And for Donatello Versace to literally come out and say, you know what, I'm done with that. We're winning. For the first time ever, the catwalks of London Fashion Week were completely fur-free prompting calls for other cities to follow suit. Helsinki banned leather, and both Los Angeles and San Francisco voted unanimously to ban the sale of fur. Burberry announced it would no longer use Angora, and fashion giant ASOS pledged to ban silk, mohair, feathers, and cashmere, a decision many credited to animal rights charity PETA, which inspired a number of high street shops, including Topshop, 
H&M and Marks and Spencers to stop using mohair. Away from fashion, a key moment came when supermarket Tesco, after hiring a director of plant-based innovation in 2017, launched a major plant-based line with more than 20 options, rolling out across 600 stores. It started an avalanche of dedicated vegan sections and product launches, from vegan butter, cheese and ice cream, to sandwiches and other ready-made meals in light of new consumer demand. If you eat um, less meat, there's a lot of meat people, the meat industry is going to go down, you know. As stores expanded their meat-free offerings, these products became for the first time ever headline news, alerting more and more people to the options available everywhere. You know, there's callaloo, aki, sweet potato, yam, banana and tomato, cabbage, spinach, avocado, chocho, butter bean and cocoa, courgette, millet, plantain, rice and peas and pumpkin, mango, dates and guava, chickpeas and cassava, Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, onion, fennel and cucumber, plum, pear and papaya, aubergine and sire, lime, lentils and quinoa, homeo bread and homeo flour, watercress and okra, tofu and sweet pepper, couscous and carrot, broccoli and coconut, peaches, apples, apricot, breadfruit, jackfruit, sour sap, pistachios, cashews and almond, walnut, peanut, also pecan, sesame seeds, sunflower, lemon, orange, pineapple and melon, bulgur, wheat and garlic, hijiki and rocket, popcha and pomegranate, kiwi, corn and turnip, berries, cherries and strawberries, beetroot, grape. See, there's a lot of food you can eat. Arsenal of lunch. The maddest, so loud, maddest, yes. it's mad, yes. it's mad. It was just Tesco before, and a bit of Sainsbury's, whatever, whatever. Like a supermarket war Bro, about yes. who could be more vegan, vegan now, now right? yes. Uh, but not even that, supermarket war, who could be more vegan, but tasty at the same time. Tesco's come with a oven and a wooden mm. kitchen, and then Iceland come with a vid. no yeah. Bro, it's mad. You're now, I, I heard this morning, in 25,000 stores. We are, yeah. Which is fabulous. It's a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and certainly the buzzword that I'm hearing here um, as we walk up and down the aisles is plant-based everything is where it's at. People are now starting to recognize the abuses that exist in animal agriculture, not only to animals, but to workers, to rural communities, to the environment. You know, you look at the role of animal agriculture and climate change and antibiotic resistance and rainforest deforestation and ocean acidification. So many things converge around the same intersection of what we put in our mouths every day. But then everything went a step further when it was revealed that another product called clean meat could be brought to market by the end of 2018. Thank you, MNN TV, MNN.org, plant-based news, music, Moby, roar, reaching out for animal rights, me, we, editing, intro, outro, Nancy Colbert. Resources, vegan.com, vegetarian resource group, vrg.org, vegan for life, Norris and Messina, Main Street Vegan, Moran, Mercy for Animals, One Man's Quest, Rumpel, Thug Kitchen, Eat Like You Gave A, F asterisk, CK.